So um, I'm joined today by um, Gabby Byrne, who is an aircraft engineer, um, and she's very kind enough to talk us through kind of her job and her, her career up to this point. So hello, Gabby. Good afternoon. Hi. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, absolute pleasure. I mean, normally I, I have a much more exciting kind of room to be in. This, <laughs> I'm afraid you've been lumped with the office today. <laughs> okay. Um, so do you mind kind of just starting us off with um, just kind of telling us what your job is, kind of what is it you do and what does a, a day in the life look like for you? Yeah, sure. Um, so I'm an aircraft engineer. I work for Virgin Atlantic. Um, currently I'm in the structures team. So I've been in this team for about 18 months and we deal with any damage that's sustained to any of our aircraft. So it might happen more often than you think. Sometimes aircraft are damaged in flight, whether that's by birds or by lightning, or sometimes when they're on the ground, they take knocks or just general wear and tear. Yeah. So it's the responsibility of our team to assess those damages and define repairs for them, just to basically ensure that they can continue flying safely. Um, wow. a, a typical day, obviously it's, it's quite reactionary, so we don't really know what's going to happen sometimes day to day. We're sort of just waiting for reports to come to us. So that's sort of one half of it. And the other half, we've got some more sort of long term planned out work. So whether we're modifying our aircraft in some way to make you know, reinforced parts or make parts stronger, um, or we're just looking to make general improvements to the aircraft. So some work is known and some work is completely unknown. So yeah, it's, it's a split yeah. of both, which I think keeps the job quite exciting. I was going to say, if it's one or the other, it might either become tedious or, or stressful, I guess, wouldn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think we've got quite a nice balance. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Um, thank you. So what's kind of been your journey to this point so far? What's uh, So what's been your journey to this point so far? Um, kind of either educationally, kind of through to career, what's, what's got you to where you are? Um, I think probably going back to when I was about 14 or 15, I think I was in year nine. Um, I'd always been interested in sort of math, science, DT, but was never really sure what I wanted to do as a career. I think it's so hard to ask someone that age what they want to do with their life and, and you know what you want to do. Um, yeah. And it was it was kind of a talk like this that really turned me on to aircraft engineering. So, oh, really? we, yeah, we had a visit from um, an aircraft engineer who worked for Rolls-Royce. So he was involved, obviously, in engines. Yeah. And I just found his job absolutely fascinating. And it just basically turned me on to aircraft engineering, not necessarily just engines, but just the world of, the world of, of aircraft engineering. So it kind of went hand in hand. I was enjoying maths and DT and sciences. Yeah. So I made sure I picked DT as one of my GCSEs. And then moving on through A-levels, I went for maths, physics, engineering as an AS level. Wow. And then Additionally, I did geography, you know, kind of like a, it was something that I enjoyed and it was yeah. just in case one day I wake up and don't like engineering anymore, which thankfully didn't happen. It was just something different to have. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. So, so went through A-levels, went on to university. So I did um, aerospace engineering, which was a three year course. So um, I studied that and then graduated from university and then started on that cycle of, OK, now I need to kind of move into the real world, I need to get a job. So I was looking at various graduate programs and things like that. Um, I took a, a, a full time job somewhere totally unrelated to engineering, just so I could kind of build something on my CV yeah. whilst trying to get my foot in the door somewhere else. Um, luckily, got got accepted onto the, the Virgin Atlantic engineering graduate program. So that itself was two years. And it was a, a great opportunity to kind of understand not just engineering, but also how a wider airline works. So the two years was split into three month placements all through various engineering departments. So they got a full picture of what all the yeah. options are available. So what each one does, plus how they all work together, which I think was really, really helpful. Yeah. So I did three months in structures, which is obviously what I'm in now. And there's everything from mechanical systems to avionics, propulsion, landing gear, uh, yeah. reliability, cabins, so the interiors of our aircraft. So yeah, it was a really amazing opportunity to to learn about a, a vast range of, of departments and how they all work together. Yeah. So would you recommend a, a graduate program as, as a good way to kind of gain the experience and gain the insight into more than just kind of what people see from the outside? Yeah, definitely. I think it's a really good stepping stone as well, going from university into full time employment. It's yeah. kind of a nice way to make the transition because you're 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 working, but you're also still learning. Yeah. 
rather than just throwing you in at the deep end and <laughs> you sit at a desk all yeah, day. That's it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a great way to gradually build. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Um, so uh, you obviously mentioned some of your qualifications, kind of GCSEs and A-levels and your degree. Um, are there any other qualifications you kind of earned along the way that have helped uh, kind of boost your experience or anything like that? Um, I'm not sure if there's any additional qualifications. I've, I've managed to gain a couple of extras now I'm at work, but mm. obviously that's because I'm in full time employment. But I think previous part time jobs that I had, whether that was during A levels or whilst at university or afterwards, really helped me to gain other skills that I've, I've managed to transfer into the world of engineering, even if it's just people skills, time management. Yeah. There are ways for people to to earn those skills rather than having to complete a qualification. If, if That's that it. Happens. Yeah, I think some of those sounds one that it's one of those cheesy things is that it's kind of the the university of life or that kind of yeah, just sort exactly. of education that is so important that a lot of people forget about. Yeah, and I don't think I realised just how much it was going to help me and, and now looking back it really has. Yeah. No, I, I think they that's... were totally irrelevant jobs as well. One of them I worked in home base and one of them I worked in Marks and Spencer's. <laughs> Oh, it sounds, so, sounds a lot like my career path as well. I've done, yeah. my, done my share at Curry's and PC World as well. Yeah, exactly. So nothing to do with being a science teacher, nothing to do with being an engineer, but they help you so much. Oh, they so really I would say to people, just just never knock it. If there's an opportunity to work or to, to work with other people, you just, just take it. I, I completely agree. I think that's a brilliant advice. Um, so kind of uh, thinking back of uh, some of the kind of the, the highlights uh, of your journey so far, what what would you say was kind of that, that key highlight moment that you've, you've really been kind of proud of yourself for um was it something that you you pushed to make happen yourself or was it something that almost came by surprise and happened for you um i guess my highlight would have to be one of the placements within the graduate scheme itself was three months working um in one of our hangars and working at the they call it the line so basically working at the airport where all the aircraft you see them all parked up with passengers being on and offloaded yeah um, so it was working on the tours like actually physically fixing the aircraft, which is something I didn't think I'd ever have a chance to do. <laughs> yeah. Itself was it was part of the graduate scheme anyway, but I think I'd, I'd taken the time and worked in all the other departments and built up relationships with people, and I think that's another really important thing. You, you build these relationships, and sometimes the opportunities present themselves through these relationships as well. So I'd made an effort to get to know people, and then they they made the effort to help me learn and gave me great so, opportunities to work on aircraft and. You know, I, I flew on maintenance flights where the aircraft was completely empty and I was you know, wow. sat in the cockpit with the pilots, which is something <laughs> I didn't even think was a possibility. Yeah. But yeah, that's probably definitely the highlight of the graduate scheme. And I think more personally, probably just getting a degree and graduating. Like my parents hadn't been to university, okay. didn't have anyone else that was in the industry. So I think personally that that was definitely a highlight. Pushing, pushing well beyond. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Um, so thinking back then, back at your time at kind of school and sixth form, what was it that you do you love back then, or what was it that you learned back then that you thought at the time, I've absolutely no idea why I'm doing this. I've just been told to crack on with this word by sir or miss, and I'm I'm doing it for the to, to get the GCSE or to get the A level. But is there anything that's come back and you've gone, wow, I'm I'm really glad I learned that. That's really helpful. <laughs> yeah, there actually has um, definitely from. A level physics and maths where we learn mechanics. Yeah. So now I sometimes have to use that in my in my job when we're defining repairs for aircraft structures. We have to be able to justify why the repair that we're proposing is strong enough to sustain loads on the aircraft. Oh, and sometimes it goes back to just basic calculations that we learn at A level that then carry through into university. Which at the time you think, why am I learning about how a beam <laughs> bends? This is ridiculous. Yeah. And it's only a few years later you think, oh, right, okay, that's why. <laughs> yeah, so it's, yeah. it's those classic ridiculous scenarios they write the questions into, but actually the logic behind it is pretty sound. Exactly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, oh, go on, I've got one last question for you and I'll, I'll let you have your time back. Um, if, you could, if you could give advice either to yourself or to any other 13, 14 year old uh, in a similar position as you've been, what, what advice would you give them? What would you say to them? I think... It would be just just do what you enjoy. I think there can be quite a lot of pressure with people asking you, you know, what you're going to do with your career, what A levels are you going to do, are you going to go to university, what you're going to do. I think if you're not quite sure, just carry on with what you enjoy, do the subjects you like, because even if 
it's difficult. If you've got an interest in it, you're going to want to persevere and you're going to want to do well. Yeah. Um, I don't think anyone should feel pressured to go to university or equally pressured to do an apprenticeship. Just do your own research and do what you think is best for you. I think that's I think that's absolutely perfect advice. Yeah, there's a uh, as you said, there's so many pressures on on students these days to to go down this route or to go down that route or to follow in the family journey or or whatever yeah. it is. But actually, you're right. It's about making those decisions that that suit you as a as the individual, not not you as the the friend or the family member or or whatever it might be. Yeah, just do the subjects you enjoy and the ones that make you happy, and you'll you'll find your path. That's lovely. Thank you so much, Gabby, and I will I'll let you have your your afternoon back to you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you very much for having me. Oh, it's an absolute pleasure. And uh, I'm sh I'm sure this won't be our last time for a chat. And uh, no, I'd love to, not. I'd love to be able to uh, to to organise some stuff in the future for some of our students with yourself. I think that'd be great. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'd love to. All right. I will. Uh, well, I'll say goodbye. Thank you.